Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, quick tutorial on wall CX and generative design with wall C. In this tutorial I would like to talk about the significance of the random seat setting we have in the settings here. We haven't uh, talked about it in depth uh, but in this video I would like to point out the significance of this option that will allow you users, designers, and architects to take the full advantage of uh, wall seeing their generative design uh, workflows. So essentially, uh, a little bit of history about evolutionary algorithms, they are metaheuristic and stochastic in nature. What it means? It means that they have a uh, taste of randomness through the process. If I want to put it very uh, briefly and uh, simply, it means that if you run the same exact optimization problem over and over, you won't get the exact same result. What is the downfall of this? If you change something in your optimization problem, I mean, you would like to track the effect of this change due to this stochastic nature and the randomness involved in the process, you uh, the results are not the same and the change that you see in the results are not completely because of the change you did in the design problem. So let me show you what do I mean by this. So by default the random seat in wall CX user interface is 1. It means that every single time if you run the same optimization problem you will get the same exact results. Let me do a very quick test. I'm going to do a small population of 10, 10, in general 100 population size, and I'm going to run this optimization problem. Start. So it's, it's, uh, the simulation is running in uh, 3, 2, and uh, 1 seconds. Okay, great. So now I'm going to, I'm um, going back to Grasshopper, and I'm going to get the fitness values internalized in a data component. I'm going to call this random seed one test one. Yeah? I'm going to put it somewhere here. Now, uh, I'm going back to my Wallacy and I'm going to run the simulation again. Nothing changed and the random seed is one. 10, 10 and start. The simulation is running again and uh, 3, 2, and 1 second. Done. Going back to Rhino and Grasshopper, I'm going to get the, uh, uh, I'm going to say random seed 1 and test 2. And again, I'm going to put this back here, internalize it. And now I'm going to test and understand whether are they different or not. List item, I'm going to grab uh, the same fitness values and I'm going to bring in a slider between uh, 0 to 3 and we'll connect it to these two list items. So now I'm receiving item 0 which is fitness value 1. I'm going to flatten this and flatten this. In order to visualize this uh, uh, identical values I'm going to bring a graph component, quick graph, and we'll connect it here. So this is for a test one and this is for a test two. As you can see they are exactly identical and their upper and lower domain of the values are also identical. If I move through the values as you can see they are on top of each other. The, the second one is blue and the first one is uh, I'm sorry the second the second one is blue and the first one is red. Now let me go and change this random seed. So when we said if the random set is one, it means that the uh, stochastic nature of the algorithm is going to be controlled in a way which help which lets you to recreate what you have recreated before in order to track the changes. Uh, that the a user uh, does in the design problem. Now if I change this to zero and nothing changed in the design problem, I'm just only changing the random seed, the same population size, and I'm running the simulation again. Okay, uh, running it again with zero, five, four, three, two, and one, and done. Now I'm going to look to 
uh, what happened to the values. I'm going to clear these values, put them here, internalize the data, and they say random test, random seed 0, test 1. Now if I connect the same list item and uh, connect this to the first one, because first and the second one are identical, connect them here, we will see, oh, so this now changed. It means that if the random set is zero, we can't recreate the exact same thing we created before. Now the now I'm going to go back and run again with again random set zero. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to run again random set zero, and uh, there you go. Four, three. 2 and 1. Done. Going back to run a grasshopper, get uh, get another data, and I'm going to clear these values, get them back here, internalize the value, random is 0, and test 2. You remember when we had test 1 and test 2 in random seed 1, they were identical? Because they are random seed 1, and they are recreating the same exact result. However, when we have the random seed 0, this is not a case anymore. And the results are not identical. So this is random seed test 1, te random seed 0 test 1, and this is random seed 0 test 2, which is showing that if we change a random seed to 0, the, uh, st uh, the randomness into the algorithm will be enabled. Uh, and every time we create and we run the evolutionary algorithm, uh, the results are not identical. So if I go back and change something in my design problem and wanted to understand the effect of that change in the results and in the optimization problem, with random seed zero, this is not uh, an accurate observation. However, if I go back and change something in the design problem and run with random seed 1, the change we get is the exact effect of the change we did in our design problem optimization problem. Let me go back and simply just change one of the slider values from the natural numbers to real numbers with one decimal values. Now going back to uh, our uh, guy here, well, let's see, opening this up. And I'm going to run it again with random seed 1. But this time, we did a very slight change in the optimization problem. We changed the, uh, the slider values from natural numbers to decimal numbers. And I'm going to run again. And uh, again, the, uh, the optimization problem is running right now. And if you look into the graphs also, you can see that there has been a difference. But uh, let, let us just look at the numbers so we can say definitively that there has been a... Uh, different and effect of a change. Now with the random seed 1 and test 3. The test 3 is the one that we did some change in the optimization problem. Now going back to this I'm going to bring a quick graph again and I'm going to connect this. Uh, the first and the second one are identical but if we connect this, uh, the test 3 we see that this change that has happened is solely due to the edit and the change that we applied to our optimization problem. This is extremely pr uh, important for uh, practicing generative design in the best uh, way possible because this way we can go and track the effect of the changes we apply to our optimization problem in order to get the solutions better and more efficiently. And this random seed is extremely important because it helps us to recreate what we have been uh, what we have created before and uh, we can simply go and track the effect of changes in the design problem. However, if we put it in zero, the, the scenario two happens when every time the, uh, because evolution algorithms are in, in, in nature, they are stochastic and every time uh, there is a randomness involved in the process. I have to mention, it's worth mentioning that uh, having random set as one doesn't, doesn't mean that the evolutionary algorithm is being disabled or is being uh, minimized or not being efficient. It only means that it allows Tawal CX to recreate 
the problems and recreate the solutions that uh, cre it, it created before. And it will help us to track the effect of changes that we apply to our algorithm and to the design problem and optimization problem that we have. I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys uh, take advantage of random seed uh, in Wall CX because it's uh, extremely important and it has a, a big uh, significance in the uh, generative design strategies and workflows. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video tutorial. Bye.